Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to balance a very challenging uh, balancing equation problem of copper plus nitric acid yields copper nitrate plus nitrogen dioxide plus water. So in order to approach this question, all right, in order to approach the answer really, um, what I would do in this case, I'm gonna show you a totally different method, okay? Let's place in variables, A, B, C, D, and E, in place of every single coefficient value, okay? Now, when the problem becomes harder, we like to, we need to, not that we like to, but we really need to uh, think mathematically, okay? Math provides us a foundation and a set of rules we can kind of follow in order to answer complicated problems. That's the benefit of math. Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna create a series of relationships between these coefficients, okay? A, B, C, D, and E. A series of interrelated statements and hopefully then at the end, we can kind of just piece it all together, all right? So first let's take a look at, let's say copper. Notice how copper is only in this one area, in this element, one spot on the left-hand side, and copper is only in this one spot on the right-hand side. Also notice how copper has a subscript of one on the right-hand side and a subscript of one here. What that means is I know for a fact that whatever value I have for A, better equal the value for C. I mean, it has to be true. Whatever A's coefficient is, has to be the same thing as C's coefficient, okay? They have to be the same thing. Otherwise, the copper would never balance. So I'm gonna write that math statement down that A must equal C. Let's move on. Let's go to now hydrogen. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way through, balance this out, but balance it out through a series of equations, okay? So basically, for hydrogen, hydrogen only exists in this one compound on the left, and it only exists in this one compound on the right. So I can I know a relationship then between B and E, okay? Now, how this is going to work is the following way. B will equal E, okay, I'm going to write B will equal E, except that whatever E is, it's going to have to be multiplied by the value of 2, for the number of hydrogen. Watch, pretend, for example. Pretend E is gonna be uh, five. If E is five, right, then five times two is a total of 10, so you'd have 10 hydrogen on the right, and what would this number, or letter, excuse me, what would this letter B have to be in order for the hydrogen to balance then? Well, this would have to be 10, right, because there's a coefficient, excuse me, a subscript of one, right? It would have to be that. So in this particular case, what I'm saying then is this statement that B will equal two times whatever E's value is. That's what we saw before, right? If E was five, B was going to be 10. So that's the math statement that shows that, okay? Now let's move on to the next element. Let's look at nitrogen, okay? So if you notice, nitrogen exists in this one compound on the left and it exists in these two compounds on the right. So watch what I'm gonna do. I know that the coefficient B times whatever the subscript is of nitrogen, which is a one, so in other words, B, will simply be equal to then the coefficient C multiplied by whatever the subscript or whatever the total number of nitrogen is in this compound. Now, here's the problem. There is one nitrogen here that is true, but there's an outside subscript of two. So in reality, there's really going to be two nitrogens. You wouldn't write it like this, but in, when we're doing thinking about balancing, this is how I would think about it. So in other words, it would be C times whatever two is, uh, excuse me, it would be two times whatever C is, all right, so two times whatever C is. Plus, we also have nitrogen coming from this compound, so it would be one multiplied by whatever D is, or AKA D. So this would be the statement for nitrogen. That would balance the nitrogen, okay? So let me bring that on down. And you can write this along the way, that this was the one we used for copper, the first equation. The second equation was for hydrogen. The third equation was for nitrogen. And last but not least, there's only one other thing to do here. It's oxygen, right? So we're gonna have one more equation. So take a look at oxygen here. It exists in that one compound on the left and it exists ah, in all three compounds on the right. So what we're gonna do, we take our subscript of oxygen, multiply it by the coefficient. So 3B has to equal the total on this side for oxygen. 
Now remember here, same thing as we did for nitrogen. This is really a six in here, so I would think about it as O6. So it's going to be six times whatever C is plus two times whatever D is plus one times whatever E is, or AKA just, just E, all right? So these are our equations now. Now I know this is like, oh my God, this, this looks almost impossible, but it's really not that bad. Let me just box these all in. And this was then for our oxygen, okay? So now what we need to do is we basically need to simplify these now. We wanna get these into a series of relationships that look like this, okay? We want just like A is equal to C and B is equal to two times whatever E is. We want simple relationships, okay? So these I kinda have to simplify a little bit. And now this takes a little bit of, you know, ingenuity, creativity. You gotta think about this a little bit, all right? So I'm just gonna start trying some stuff, all right? I notice that I'm gonna start with this big equation. So I got 3B, 3B, is gonna be equal to 6C plus 2D plus E. I also realize that I know a relationship here between the letter B and C and D. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and substitute it on in for my B. And watch why I'm gonna do that. So ready, I'm gonna do three, multiplied by now 2C plus D is equal to 6C plus 2D plus E. Let's simplify this. Three times two C is gonna be six C. Three times D is going to be three D. This is equal to six C plus two D plus E. And I realize, oh, look at this, right? The C's are gonna cancel because mathematically, if I subtract the six C on over, right, that goes to zero. They both cancel. I would then have three D is equal to now two D plus E. Oh, wait a minute, I can subtract now the two D on over as well. And I realize that D has to equal E. Oh, right? They might say, how did you see that ahead of time? I didn't. I just do some stuff and hope for the best. <laughs> all right, right? That's kind of what science is also all about, right? You just do some stuff, do something and see how it works. If it doesn't work, no big deal, try something else. But this now is nice because it tells me, and I'm going to bring this now on up here, this gives me now another relationship, another important relationship. I'm going to say D will equal E, okay? So, so far, these are very important. This one here, this one here, and this one here. All right. Now, let me just erase this because I'm going to need a little more space. So, what I realize now is I have kind of the D, the E, and the B <laughs> all intertwined, okay? I have the D, the E, and the B all intertwined because I know D equals E, right? And I know E equals B. Well, not, I mean, two E equals B. You understand what I'm saying, but I know the relationship. So therefore, I also know a relationship between D and B, all right? So they're all interconnected, but the really what's going on is the odd man out here is gonna be A equals C. It's kind of on its lonesome, right? It's not intertwined into either one of these two relationships. These two relationships are definitely intertwined now, and that's good. I want these all to be somehow intertwined. If I can figure, if I can try to get some equations where they're all intertwined, that's good. I can then start solving. I can then start make, making some guesses about what the values are, okay? So this is the next step that takes a little creativity, a little bit of foresight. But what I realize is maybe what I'll do is I need to somehow tie A and C or A or C somehow to like D or B or something, okay? And I realized that there is a, a little relationship here between C, right, B and D somehow in this equation. So let me highlight that equation, okay? So B is equal to 2C plus D. Now, I wanna somehow get one equation here. I have three variables. I don't want three, I only want two. Remember, that's the goal here. I, I have a series of equations that relates two variables to one another. This equation relates three. So what I wanna do is I wanna try to get rid of something, okay? I wanna try to get rid of something if I possibly can. Now, how do we go about doing this? Well, this will be a series of steps. So what I wanna do maybe is let me try and get rid of, oh, I see, okay. So why don't we do this? We know that B has to equal two times E, right? So let's substitute this two E in for B in that equation. So 2E equals 2C plus D. Now you might say, well, Andrew, you're no closer than you were before. You still got three variables. I agree, I agree. 
I agree. But I also know that D is equal to E. In other words, I can take my E and plug it in for D. And now I have 2E is equal to 2C plus E. And yes, I do have three terms, but I have only two variables. So subtract the E on over, and we realize that E must equal 2C. And now if I've done my job correctly, okay, let's take this, let's box this, let's bring it on over. If I now have done this correctly, everything should kind of be intertwined now, okay? Everything should be intertwined. I'm gonna erase the work. If you notice, and maybe I'll bring all of these now. Oops, what happened there? I'm gonna bring all of these now on over to one side, okay? Let's clean up this mess a little bit. Let's bring these guys out. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff now because this is really unimportant. So now what I realize is that I have all my variables intertwined. Watch. So I have E is equal to 2C. Now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna forget about the two and all this stuff. I'm gonna just, E is related to C. And I also know C is related to A. So now I tied in A to C. I tied in then C to E. I tied in then E to D. And then, and then I tied in now, right? Where's the, Where's the uh, last part of D? Well, remember, D is also equivalent to E, and I tied in E to then B. Now, I know you're probably like, wow, my head just exploded. Um, yeah, mine did too a little bit, right? But everything is everything is intertwined at the moment. Everything is intertwined. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making some guesses. I'm going to start making some guesses on values. Now I'm going to look here, and I'm going to try to realize which numbers should be the lowest, okay? Well, I realize that my C or my E should be the lowest, okay? They should be the lowest values. They should be the lowest values because I'm gonna take whatever C is or whatever E is and I gotta multiply each of them by two to get the next value, okay? Right, to get the next value. So let's just hypothesize for a minute. Let's say C is equal to one, okay? Let's just start with that. Let's see what happens. If C is equal to one, then what does E have to be equal to? Well, if C is one, one times two is gonna be two, so E has to be equal to two. Okay, if E is equal to two, what else do we know? Well, we can go down here if you want. We can go to a whole bunch. Actually, let's go to here first. If E is equal to two, then what the heck does D have to be? Well, D has to be equal to two as well. Okay, well, that's cool. Well, what, what else is implied when E is equal to two? Well, if E is equal to two, two times two is gonna be four, so what the heck is B? So B is gonna be a total of four, right? And what's the only other letter that's not represented here? We got B, C, D, and E. We don't have A, right? We don't have A, but no big deal. What do we know about A? A is equal to C, and what do we say C was? C was one, so wait a minute. Are these the values? Is this it? Well, why don't we go in and plug them on in now, right? Let's go back and plug them in. So A, we said had to be one. B, and actually, you know what? Let me just erase everything, okay? A, B, C, D, E. So A had to be one, B had to be a four, C had to be a one, D had to be a two, and E had to be a two. Let's see if this works out, okay? One copper and one copper, good. Hydrogen's next, four hydrogen, right? Because the four times the one, and look, looky over here, right? Four hydrogen over there as well. That's balanced, ooh, this is looking good. Four nitrogen, right? Because their subscript of nitrogen is a one. So we got four nitrogen. So notice here in this compound, we have two nitrogen, right? This is a one. So that's really two times one and then times one. So that's just a total of two. And then looky here, right? Two times one again. So a total of four on the right-hand side. So nitrogen is balanced. Now, last but not least is the oxygen, right? So let's write this down. Four times three for a total of 12, right? 12 on the left. How many oxygen in this compound? Well, it looks like three times two, right, is gonna be six. Two times the two over there is gonna be four. And two times the subscript of one is gonna be two. And looky here, we got a total of 12. And that's it. That's the balanced equation, okay? Now you can technically do this process on every single balancing equation out there. You can use variables and just set up equations and relationships. You can do that. You can solve every problem like that. That's technically, I guess, the most foolproof way, but quite honestly, who likes to do that? 
On a problem like this, it is the most efficient way to go about it. If you utilize this math method, initially, it, it's complicated, I agree. But trust me, it's the most efficient way forward. What you should do, you should understand this video, put this away, come back to it tomorrow, try to replicate it yourself, okay? And then take a simple problem and try to replicate it on that one. And I guarantee it'll become a lot easier. All right, guys, thanks so very much for tuning. I really do appreciate it. Please help us out by liking and subscribing. Uh, check out our channel. We've got thousands of videos out there, not only in chemistry, but physics and mathematics as well. We'd love to help you out with more, okay? We look forward to helping you soon. Take care.